Hello friends, good afternoon and welcome to Weathercast. Today's educational video is on urban heat island and their effect on extreme weather conditions. An urban heat island is a phenomenon that occurs when a city experiences warmer temperature than normal and this is mainly due to the localized trapping of the heat. The effect of urban heat island is experienced in the form of extreme heat waves or sometimes cloud burst. The reason for creation of an urban heat island is the rapid urbanization, reduction in the green cover or forests and increased emissions. In principle, the urban heat island can be realized if we look at the energy budget, especially the radiation budget. So the amount of heat energy coming from the sun and how it is distributed amongst the atmosphere and surface of the earth. That will actually tell us how this urban heat island is generated and what are the repercussions of such extreme uh, heat sinks. So we all know that a balance is maintained between the earth's surface and atmosphere and this is mainly balanced between the incoming and the outgoing solar radiation. So you have this, <coughs> the sun's heat energy is the major source of uh, thermal energy or the, the heat that is being sent all the way to the atmosphere, Earth's atmosphere and surface. So if you look at the budget, so this is the entire budget, in the next coming slides I am going to break it down and explain how this heat energy from the sun is helpful in creation of these heat islands and um, how effectively can we reduce the formation of these urban heat islands and hence the extreme conditions. So let us assume that the solar radiation enters from the top of the atmosphere and for all um, benefit for, uh, for all useful purposes let us assume that 100% of the radiation is coming in from the sun and of course this is a short wave radiation because the temperature of the uh, sun is very large so the uh, temperature and the wavelength are inversely proportional so larger temperature means shorter wavelength so this is a short wave radiation and let us assume that 70% of that uh, incoming radiation is absorbed by the earth and atmosphere and 30% is reflected back to the space so that is uh, known as albedo and this albedo is basically because of the presence of clouds or snow or reflective surfaces which simply just don't trap the energy they just let it, they just let it go into the space so 70% is the useful energy that is being absorbed from the sun to the earth and atmosphere. Out of the 70% that is absorbed, which is short wave only, 51% comes to the ground. The, the gases and dust in the atmosphere, they take up the 17% and clouds take up some 2% because clouds can also trap energy. So this is the um, proportion in which the 70% that is absorbed uh, this is the proportion in which it gets distributed. So ground, the gases and clouds. So total is 70%. The 30% that is reflected back uh, is known as the albedo of the earth uh, atmosphere. Uh, and that is mainly because uh, some reflective surfaces on the ground, uh, some scattering from the atmosphere and some scattering from the clouds. This will allow uh, only 70% of the heat to be retained. So that is exactly what we have said. So out of the 70%, 51% comes to the ground and 19% is taken up by the clouds and atmosphere. So total is 70% short wave that is coming in. So I am right now only focusing on this portion. So these two. So short wave radiation is absorbed by the earth's atmosphere and ground. <coughs> so of course ground absorbs far more radiation than atmosphere. Okay. So the question is why aren't we boiling? Because if you step your feet on the earth then it should be on earth's surface then it should be boiling because you get a lot of heat. The reason is because energy is continuously being transferred from ground to atmosphere. So because whatever is at a higher uh, energy will try to release the energy to low energy uh, region. Okay, And <coughs> what happens is the energy is received in short wave form from the solar uh, uh, in a, from the solar radiation but then it is emitted in a long wave form. Okay, uh, So that is the uh, emission. So radiation absorbed is short wave, whereas emitted is long wave. 
So this is the, the red arrows that I have represented here are the infrared long wave radiations that are being radiated back from the ground in the form of long wave. So what happens is the earth receives 70% or 70 units, let us just put some units, 70 units of radiation from the sun and it emits 111 units of long wave radiation. So this conversion, you may be confused that 70 is, is absorbed but 111 is released. The reason is because these are different forms of radiation. This is short wave whereas this is long wave. Okay. So hence the long wave emission will be much higher compared to what is being received because it is getting converted from short wave to long wave. So 117 units of long wave radiation emitted from the earth's surface to the atmosphere. Out of that, 111 is being absorbed in the atmosphere, okay, which is here, and 6 directly goes out to the space. Okay, So 111 and 6 is going out to the space. So now we are only going to focus on this 111. Okay, So total is 117. So budget is what matters. So 111 is what is long wave radiation is what is absorbed by the atmosphere from the surface, which is this. Okay. Now, there are agents in the atmosphere which are the clouds, water vapor, carbon dioxide, which are the greenhouse gases, uh, and there are other greenhouse gases as well, uh, like nitrous oxide and all those things, uh, sulfur oxide, <coughs> and of course, there is ozone layer as well. So, what happens is these agents um, take up this energy and they, they elevate the energy that is being received. So, 116 or 111, sorry, 111 that is being released is elevated to 160 units because these agents have do a chemical reaction and that chemical reaction actually increases the temperature of that particular uh, emission that is being emitted so 111 becomes 160 okay i hope you get it so net emission that is being uh, so the net emission that is 111 is being emitted from the earth okay surface to atmosphere but then in the atmosphere it becomes 160 okay 160 is the now amount of long wave radiation that is being pre present in the atmosphere. So long wave absorption by atmosphere is 160. Now out of this 160, what happens is 96 units of long wave radiation goes back to the surface okay, because of the presence of clouds. So the clouds will take up this uh, thing and they will radiate back 96 and 64 goes back to space. Okay, So that is, this is the example. Okay. This 96 could become 100, whatever. But let us just take an example. So 96 units goes back to the surface and 64 goes back to the space. Now, we have a <coughs> balance between the incoming short wave, which is 51 and 19, and outgoing long wave, which is 160, and 96 of infrared is being sent back to the surface and 64 is going back. So now let us do a net balance. So what balance we will do is we will take the amount of radiation that is emitted and amount of radiation that is absorbed and we will do it separately for long wave and short wave. So first of all let us consider the long wave and let us do it for atmosphere and earth surface which is the ground. So atmosphere the amount of radiation that is being absorbed is 111. Go back here 111 and the amount of thing that is being emitted is 160. So absorbed minus emitted. So emitted is 160, that is absorbed is 111. So there is a net, net deficit of 49 minus 49 units. And for the earth, absorbed is 96 and emitted is 117. 117 is emitted, 96 is absorbed. So minus 21. This is for long wave. Okay. Now let us do a short wave. So for short wave, atmosphere absorbs 19. Okay. And which is here, but moisture is absorbed 19 and ground absorbs 51. So now let us do a net all wave deficit between the long wave and short wave. So absorption of long wave is 19, absorption of short wave is minus 49. So 19 minus 49 is minus 30. So atmosphere is always in a deficit. So it always is in a cooler state compared to surface because the surface gains 51 and the losses that it has is minus 21, so 30. So net all wave surplus for surface is always 30 units. So this is what I am trying to tell you that surface is always in an excess. Surface of ground or surface of earth or ground always has excess radiation and the radiation is always from surface to atmosphere. So that is how the balance is achieved. Okay. So the net deficit of atmosphere equal to the net surplus of the surface. This is the balancing act. This is what we call the balancing act. So the amount of 
the net surplus that is being present in the surface is emitted back to the atmosphere or is shared or is it, it, it's balanced back to the atmosphere through conduction or convection. Conduction is nothing but when you bring two surfaces very close to each other then they will only conduct through the material. So very close to the ground okay, energy can be conducted to the surrounding uh, atmospheric parcels or air parcels or energy can go back into the ground because the ground surface is solid right it is so then it will conduct energy to the ground which is what we call as ground soil moisture so it goes into the ground the energy is going into the ground that is how surface will cool down so if there is a presence of green cover then of course you feel less amount of heat because some amount of heat is seeped into the surface and the, sec the second one is convection which is the transfer of heat from one area to the other purely by the wind or by advection so warm air near the surface is either transported up or cold air is transported down and that is how the convective in convective cell is created or convection is created and that is how mixing occurs. So the fluid from one portion to the other portion will travel by air and this is the exact reason why on a <coughs> breezy day you feel less amount of heat because the amount of heat is being continuously transferred from that place to an other place whereas on a still day you will feel a lot of heat because there is no breeze correct and that's why we always look for sea breeze like sea breeze will always come in and sweep you and it will give in a nice cold air because it will bring in the cold air and it will take away the warm air from that particular region to someplace else okay so these are the mechanisms of energy transfer so energy is always transferred transported from the surface to atmosphere through either conduction or convection and there are two different types of energy so one is sensible energy and latent energy so sensible energy is the raw energy or the heat that can be sensed by a thermometer so you put out a thermometer whatever energy it is whatever temperature it is measuring is the sensible temperature which you can feel whereas latent is the <coughs> uh, moisture so latent heat is basically the sweat so you sweat a lot right so that sweat is what is the latent heat because there is a phase change so uh, the when the when the uh, air travels over or the wind travels over the lake then the water in the the water absorbs the heat and it gets released as moisture okay so energy is not lost but energy is changed to a different phase so the uh, liquid phase is now converted to vapor phase so latent heat is the conversion of liquid to vapor so water that is being converted into water vapor is happening because some amount of heat is being lost in converting water liquid to water vapor okay so these are the two different types of energy so surplus amount of energy that is being at the surface which is 30 units is being transferred back to the atmosphere either as sensible heat which is conduction and convection or by latent heat which is evaporation okay so the full picture is this so amount of heat that is short wave is 51 and 19 ground is 51 uh, <clears throat> atmosphere is 19 short wave that is being emitted back into the atmosphere is 111 and then it becomes 160 because of the presence of these uh, atmospheric agents the dust and all those different gases which create a chemical reaction and 160 out of that 160 96 is coming back to the surface in form of long wave 64 goes back to the space and when you do the net budget then we saw that ground is always excess so 30 units of ground energy is in excess and that is released back through evaporation which is latent heat or through sensible heat which is conduction or convection and as you can see where there is a latent heat I have put clouds because that water is being converted into water vapor and that will lead to formation of clouds correct whereas this is only the dry heat or the sensible heat is the heat that you feel so that that's why on a hot day where there is there are no lakes for instance if you go to interior places like Marathwada uh, or Vidarbha you will feel dry heat that is basically all the sensible heat because there is no latent heat there because there are no lakes there are no water bodies whereas when you come to the coast like Maharashtra uh, sorry coastal Maharashtra like Mumbai then you will see lot of latent heat and you will sweat a lot because lot of moisture is present and that's why humidity is also high okay so i hope now it is clear why the coastal areas are humid and why interior is very uh, not as humid so now if we do a budget of this long wave and short wave then the net radiation which is being there which is the net 30 that we said okay can either be released to the ground or it can come out as sensible heat which is H or latent heat which is Le. These are the only three ways in which you can get rid of that surplus heat. Either it will go to the ground 
so that 30 units will either go to the ground or it will go to the uh, atmosphere through latent heat or sensible heat. So now latent and sensible is not good because the issue is that when there is a latent, when there is sensible heat, then what happens is you have extreme heat wave because all the energy is being trapped in that particular location and there is no way for phase change. Okay, and so you feel a lot of heat, the dry heat is what you feel. Okay, and that dry heat will give you heat waves, loo kind of conditions and all those things. Okay, so for an instance, assume that there is no ground recharge or there is no energy that is going to the ground. So then, and in a dry place, latent heat is zero. So all the energy that is being present in the ground is going to go as sensible heat and you will feel extreme heat wave conditions there. That's why desert, desert regions are very hot. On a, on a, at more, on a uh, daytime, you will temperatures go uh, as high as 50 and 52 degrees C. <clears throat> so that is the downfall of not having any ground recharge or if you put lot of concrete, then energy cannot go into the ground. Okay, Only way the energy can go into the ground is if there is soil or if it, there is green cover or if there is forest. Okay, That is when this G will come. Okay, Otherwise, the amount of energy going to the ground is zero. So energy will only get transferred between sensible or latent heat. So sensible, we understand why it is not good because it will create a lot of heat island effect. Latent heat energy is also not good because it will lead to a lot of moisture and a lot of cloud formation and sudden cloud burst. So amount of moisture, so we say that the moisture demand has increased. The moisture demand increases because if you have if you have lake bodies, it is good because it will reduce the heat, but it will it will uh, increase the amount of rainfall, amount of extreme events like uh, extreme cloud burst events or extreme rainfall events, and that is why having latent heat energy is also not good because the moisture will be very high, and that moisture will travel from one place to the other, resulting in very extreme thunderstorm events. This is the reason why as the um, uh, as energy is increasing or uh, because of the um, global warming either we have extreme heat wave events or we have extreme uh, cloud burst event this is exactly the reason because this G is not there at all everything is concretized everything is urbanized there is no ground cover there is no soil moisture there is no green cover there is no forest so where will the energy go it will only go to the atmosphere either in the form of the sensible heat or the latent heat okay so if there are no water bodies latent heat of evaporation reduces thus the, from the balance, uh, if G is zero, sensible heat increases. And the sensible heat increase is basically you feel more heat and this is the urban heat island, hot surface, uncomfortable weather. More latent heat would mean more moisture leading to localized convective clouds, convective thunderstorms, extreme cloud burst events, extreme thunderstorm events leading to localized flooding, all those things. Most importantly, soil moisture is reduced. So if the ground is reduced, then the heat doesn't have any way of seeping in. So the heat content will increase leading to extreme events. This is what I am trying to say. So all of this translates into extreme events, creation of urban heat islands, which are like the hotspots for localized thunderstorms, uh, which which thrive on this high moisture demand. And it's not a good situation that we are putting ourselves in. So the climate change is inevitable mainly because we are responsible for urbanization, reducing the green cover and everything. So urban heat island is actually an anthropogenic effect. It is completely man-made. And I think from this budget, you must, you would have experienced or you would understand why it is so. So that is what I wanted to convey. So thank you for watching this video. Thank you for your support. Uh, please subscribe to this channel for regular weather updates along with the dynamics. I hope this video was useful and you know why extreme, uh, heat, uh, extreme events are on the rise. That's basically because of the budget, energy budget. Okay. Thank you so much and uh, please subscribe. Thank you.